Hey guys, and happy Saturday to you. Um, I had to work a little bit this morning, but I'm home from work now. It's Saturday afternoon and just relaxing and enjoying a halfway decent beer. Okay, the topic of uh, my video today is reusing yeast. Okay, everybody's trying to save uh, a couple of bucks on homebrew. Um, and that's one of the reasons we all homebrew. Besides the fact that we can actually make better beer than the crap they sell in the stores, it's uh, to save money. Now, when it comes to reusing yeast, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can make a batch of beer, ferment it out, and then on bottling day, you can make another batch of beer, and as soon as you siphon um, the fermented beer out of your primary fermenter into your bottling bucket, you can pour the uh, the new wort uh, right on top of the, uh, the yeast cake in a, a method known as slopping back. That works, but I found out it really only works if you do two things. One, it has to be what I call a, uh, a clean ferment. Uh, clean by uh, meaning there's not a lot of grain or hop residue. And that technique works best if you do a kit and kilo um, style uh, beer kits. You know, a, a kit, some dry malt extract, maybe a hop tea. And two, it has to be a similar type of beer. Um, like say if I was making a Cooper's Australian lager and I decided to make a European lager right after that that would be pretty much a perfect uh, technique you don't have to uh, pitch any more yeast, the yeast cake on the, uh, the bottom of the bucket is still alive and viable and because the wort is similar <clears throat> it'll go you know uh, it'll go to town eating the uh, the sugars in the new batch of beer. A second way that you can reuse yeast is to use a top fermenting uh, strain of yeast and scooping a full uh, a few teaspoons of um, foam off of the uh, the top of your wort during a uh, high krause. Um, if you were going to do that, what I would do is pitch my yeast, wait 24 hours, and then you crack the lid of the fermenter, scoop a bunch of spoonfuls into a, a clean and sanitized container, and then use that in a yeast starter. Those church bells just went off 10 minutes ago. Um, church is in session, guys. A third method of uh, reusing yeast is uh, yeast harvesting and uh, yeast washing. That's where after you get done fermenting a batch of beer, you um, pour the, uh, the true or the, the yeast cake in the bottom of the bucket into a couple of jars and you let them settle out and what happens is you end up with varying layers of uh, yeast. Real light layer on the bottom and then a slightly darker layer, a slightly darker layer, and then the top layer just looks like crap. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's time consuming. Um, you have to boil water, let it cool down, pour it in, okay? Shake it up, let it settle, very carefully pour the dirty layers off the top, and you have to do that a few times. But what you end up with is you know, live viable uh, yeast that you can use in a starter. I have uh, done that and it works. I've also collected uh, yeast at uh, High Krausen and used that in a starter and it works, but the, the method, method that I do uh, these days is the, less, the least time consuming and, uh, well, pretty much the easiest. Um, everybody knows about yeast starters. Okay, it's um, absolutely critical if you're using a liquid um, yeast variety because they just simply don't give you enough yeast in those, you know, the little vials. Um, y yeast has a smack pack out, um, which does have enough uh, uh, yeast cells in it. Okay, you can smack it and wait till it swells up, and it's it's a, it's its own starter. Or you can just open it and 
pitch it uh, directly in. Um, either way works fine. Okay, now what I do in a nutshell is I take my yeast and I make a starter. And once the starter is finished, I find, you know, a small container. Alright, this is the one I have been using. <clears throat> you can see I have it marked 1056, and there is a very nice amount of yeast already in there. Okay, what I do is I make a three cup yeast starter. When it is done, I will fill this oh, up to about here or so. Stick that in the refrigerator and the, uh, the rest of the starter I just pitch into the wart. Now, once you put it in the, uh, the refrigerator, the yeast gets cold, it uh, basically puts it to sleep. The yeast goes dormant, which allows you to uh, store it for uh, quite a while. And right before I want to make another starter, while well, I just pour most of that out of the vial, being very, very careful not to let any of the, uh, um, the yeast cake exposed. Um, keep it underwater, guys, or under wart, um, if you will, um, to make sure that absolutely no air gets to it. Okay, now, in order to make a, a yeast starter, you need a couple of things. You need to buy or build a stir plate, okay? I recommend building a stir plate instead of buying one because it's a whole lot cheaper to uh, build one and they're really not hard to do. Um, I'm not going to show you guys how to make a stir plate because, well, two reasons. There are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube on the subject and two, uh, I don't want to uh, willfully insult anybody's intelligence. I mean, seriously guys, you're smart enough to make beer, you're smart enough to make a stir plate. Now, I'll show you guys my stir plate and it doesn't look like much, but here it is. Okay. In order to have a stir plate, you need some kind of a container. This one happens to be a project box from a, a local electronics hobby store. I think it cost uh, 650 US dollars. Okay. Um, now inside this box is a old PC fan that I pulled out of an old computer I had. A magnet, the one in here happens to be the magnet from a hard drive from the same old computer I had. And the power cord is a cell phone charger cord. Okay, because I had a, a bunch of those sitting around. Now I don't have, I think it's called a pedometer. Alright, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have one of those little voltage regulators that uh, basically would be to regulate the uh, the speed that the, the 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 fan is spinning, but how I regulate my speed is is by weight. If I make a small starter, it spins faster. If I make a larger starter, it spins slower. Okay. Now you can use whatever containers really uh, work for you. If you want to get an Edermeyer flask, you know, by all means, go right ahead. And you can make you know a one liter, two liter starter. You can split it up and you can make a bunch of them at one time so you don't have to do them very often. What I use are mason jars. Okay, wide mouth um, mason jars. Kind of just like this one. Okay, now I made a weak wart with um, boiled water and light dry malt extract. Okay, you want to get the the lightest DME that you can get and you want to make a, uh, a weak uh, wart solution <clears throat> anywhere between 1030 and 1040 is fine this one just happens to be 1035 and I boiled it poured it in the jar and if you're going to use a mason jar guys and you're going to pour boiling water into it Okay, boil the mason jar because a hot mason jar taking on boiling liquid isn't going to break. But a cold mason jar will if you pour boiling uh, 
water into it. Okay, put it in a an ice bath in your sink. Let it cool down anywhere between I'd say you know 75 and 90 degrees is fine. This one happens to be 82 degrees. Okay, um, why 82 degrees? I don't know. It's just where I stopped cooling it down at. And you're going to need one other thing. Okay, this used to be sanitized until I just picked it up with my fingertips, but that is a stir bar, and all it is is a, a magnet. Okay, so what I do is I'll take this, shake it up. Make sure you get all the yeast off of the bottom. This might take a minute. Good enough for government work, guys. Okay, so now the uh, <clears throat> this has been shaken up. All the yeast in the vial is uh, suspended. Okay, looks all frothy and creamy. Okay, if I didn't want to uh, waste this, I'd try some of my coffee. <clears throat> and then you just pour it into. And then you just dump it into <clears throat> what you're going to use as your yeast starter. Drop in your stir bar. Now, <clears throat> this is where I like using mason jars as opposed to an Edermeyer flask. Okay, um, you can use uh, sponges and whatnot for the, the flask. But what I use is a simple paper towel. You take the the top out of the ring, okay, don't lose the top, you're going to need it at a later date. Now I just have the ring. Put this right on top. And screw it down like so. Okay. Now, no bugs or you know flies or fleas or anything can get inside of it. But there is a huge three-inch mouth on top of this where air can get in. And I will set this on the stir plate, plug it in, and I will let it spin happily away for uh, about two days. As I said, it's uh, Saturday afternoon. Tomorrow I'll be making uh, beer, and I don't have a war chiller, so I have to let it cool down overnight. So Monday morning, I will <clears throat> take my yeast starter, and I don't have one on me right now, but say <clears throat> I will fill this vial up to the top, pitch the rest of my yeast into. Um, into the uh, into the wort. Uh, put this back in the uh, the refrigerator until the next time I want to make a batch of beer, and then I will repeat the process. <clears throat> okay, really easy, guys. Right now, um, this leads to some questions. How many times can you grow the same yeast? Well, that's a really good question. I started this experiment last year, okay, and I used uh, dry yeast. Now, a lot of people, experienced home brewers, what you would consider beer experts, would say you can't make a starter with um, dry yeast. And they say that because there's special emulsifiers in it, um, it stresses the yeast, it creates like byproducts in the yeast that give your beer an off flavor 
or anything like that. They say you can't do it, but I mean you can do it with any kind of yeast. All right, most people just do it like I said with the um, with the liquid yeast because it's expensive and well you have to make a starter with liquid yeast anyway. If you want to try it with uh, dry yeast like I did, I mean by all means go ahead. Home brewing isn't part about experimentation anyway. Um, I have, well to answer, sorry, to get off the subject, and to answer the question, I have used this same yeast six times already. And the batch of beer that I make tomorrow will be the the seventh time that I am growing the uh, of the yeast or making a yeast starter from the same batch of yeast. The longest I have had yeast that I put into a starter and it actually grew and fermented beer was eight months. Um, but the the longevity of the yeast and how many times you can use it really comes down to how much detail you spend to cleaning and sanitizing. Okay. Um, Boil your your DME, sanitize all your jars or boil them. Okay. <clears throat> when the the yeast starter is over, I will clean and resanitize this. I'll even use a lighter before I pour this out, and I will fire the top of the jar just as an added. Um, measure of uh, you know cleanliness uh, security or whatnot. <clears throat> I will not be reusing this bottle again. I will be using the little uh, preformed plastic vials. Okay, but those will be cleaned and sanitized numerous times before I use them. I know once is enough, but if you are obsessive compulsive about cleaning. There's, I don't see any reason why you can't make a starter, save a little, use that small amount to make a second starter, and repeat the process over and over and over again, you know, six, eight, twelve different times, and as long as it stays in a refrigerator, and you don't bring it out, let it warm up, put it back in the fridge, I don't think there's any reason why the, the beer will not last or the, the yeast won't last <clears throat> a year. Okay, and if you're talking about, say, a, a liquid yeast, and you pay <clears throat> just for, you know, easy math, $7.50. Okay, and you make 10 batches of beer with that, and you were to buy the same yeast every time, okay, if you didn't do this, you would spend seventy-five dollars on, uh, you know, on just yeast for the year. If you do this, you spend seven dollars and fifty cents on yeast for the entire year. So, anyway, for anybody watching the video, thanks for watching me babble. I'm going to head out now. I'm going to enjoy this beer. A little bit of dinner. Something nice on the television. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Okay. I will be filming the the, uh, the beer that I'm doing tomorrow because it's for the SJ Pour Challenge. Okay. Um, I will be posting that probably about midweek. I'll be adding a Homebrew Wednesday video to that as well if I get the time to do both videos. Okay, uh, right now it's pretty much um, one or the other, but I'll try. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, eat, drink, be merry. Monday we all have to go back to work. Until the next video, take care of yourselves. Cheers, 17.